exquisite innocence of all creation. Ordinary magnificence of love. In this moment, finding the willingness to be present, letting go of all perceptions of the past and all wanderings into the future and just resting here, trusting here, allowing here to just be. In this present moment there is nothing to earn or do or prove or focus on other than love itself, harmony, peace, and joy. Finding the willingness of the heart to let go of all perceptions, opinions, judgments that say there is something else going on. There is something else to focus on. and refusing to be taken away in any way from this present moment. Just coming, coming here into focus, into the light, and resting in the true natural state of life. In breathing, in breathing and allowing that in this moment you find the willingness of the heart to invite all beloveds into the heart, letting go of all that you thought you knew about anyone or anything, all the identities that have been given to everyone and returning here now into the brilliance of peace and accepting the holy union of love in this moment. Focusing in the heart the willingness to let go of all perceptions about the world, the body, anything to do, and bringing all focus into the yes, the I am in this moment, I am that which is, I am all that is. willingness in this moment to release the past completely, to forgive the past, all of your identity that has been held in an individual separate identity, surrendering that into the hands of God and accepting the harmony of love, the flow of love, kindness of love, compassion of love, and the willingness to place the future into the hands of God, letting go of all fantasies and ideas of how things will or should look, or how they will turn out and letting everything unfold as the divine. The yes to peace and harmony and joy. And breathing into this moment. 
breathing deeply and fully, inviting humanity to return to one heart through your intention, your yes. Breathing, focusing on the heart. Breathing into the throat, opening the throat chakra, willing to receive the truth of love, the harmony of love. Surrendering the neck into love. Surrendering the shoulders, arms and hands. Everything given to love. Everything given to God. Surrendering <clears throat> the spine into God. No longer willing to keep anything separate, individualized, temporary letting the spine become the liquid of love, moving, breathing as the divine. And breathing into the heart, inviting the heart to come forward, open and available, not wanting to defend in any way for any reason that may come up willing to be the vessel of love with an open heart, undefended, breathing. Breathing and allowing the heart to come forward, undefended. And finding the prayer within the heart, the yes. The yes of the heart. Yes, I am willing to be undefended. I am willing to be open, available, present. Breathing. Surrendering the belly into the arms of God. Surrendering all the organs, all the muscle system, all the tendons, your blood vessels, everything surrendered into the hands of God to be used for love. And finding the prayer of the heart, being willing to be the instrument of love. Transform everything into the instrument of love. <coughs> Serving love. Offering love. Surrendering the hips and thighs, knees, calves, ankles, and feet, all surrendered into God. Now surrendering as you continue to breathe deeply and fully, bringing light through breath into every cell, affirming light. Letting go of all thoughts of anything else but love. Surrendering the concept of the body into the hands of God. Taking attention away from the body and into the heart. <coughs> and breathing. Surrendering the emotional body into the hands of God no longer willing to have the emotional body run by the mind and expressing fear. No longer willing to have fear running through the emotional body, but willing for everything to be of peace and joy and harmony, compassion, light itself, love itself. Breathing. Breathing as one, staying present, <coughs> alert in this moment, and yet resting in love. <coughs> Just 
and focusing in this moment that here in the infinite circle of love we are one. The sanctuary is filled with love. This universe is all of love. There is only one presence here. It is the life force of God. And within this life force we live and move and breathe as one. One heart and one breath in complete devotion to love, affirming the divine intention of devotion, and breathing, allowing. So allow this prayer to enter into your heart, opening the doors of acceptance, of healing, of divine alchemy, the willingness to accept that the intention of love is always to serve love itself. The willingness to accept healing, to be transformed into the instrument of love, into the oneness of all of creation, where you have always been and what you have always been, the truth of God, creation of love. It's not something that you have to earn or get to, but just the acceptance of what is and the letting go of all that has been made up in the name of separation. And breathing. Over the mountains of despair, we will rise above. Over the heartache and the pain, upon the wings of love. The healing of our savage heart, gently by the dove, miraculously transforming us upon the wings of love. Terrible mistakes we think we've made, regrets we've undergone. Sometimes the hopelessness makes us forget the sun at dawn. All delight and joyousness, the tender mercies of Jesus who carries our burden upon the wings of Jesus who carries our burdens upon the wings of love. Everyone that is walking on this earth believes that they've made terrible mistakes. Everyone believes that everyone else has made terrible mistakes. But in truth, you have done nothing that has ever changed the truth of love and the truth of who you are. And you have never left your source. The source of love. Love cannot leave its source. The acceptance of surrendering all burdens, all the perception of burdens, into the hands of God, into the hands of love. And that all divine beings, all masters that have walked this earth, either in present time or seemingly in the past, are all ready to take the burdens of the beliefs of separation and transform them back into love. Surrender your fear and surrender your sorrow into the hands of love. Letting them all go and affirming that 
Love is all that exists. Love is all that is true. Allow this prayer also to stir the heart into the yes. Stir the heart into remembering your innocence, your beauty, your perfection, your ordinary magnificence. Lord, 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 my beloved Master, Lord, my heart, here I present myself as I walk in this seeming journey. Here I present myself with all of my heart, giving myself into the trip of love. I ask my Blessed Mother to guide me with pure love. I ask my Blessed Mother with all of my heart. O oh, my Mother, beloved Mother, guide this seeming journey. May every step I take, may I recognize that I am in your hand, holding your hand as I walk the way of love itself. O oh, Father, Divine Father, show me the way. You will not let me fall, and you will never leave me alone. Here I, at your feet I kneel with humility. Here at your feet I say yes to all charity of love. I'm here to heal with everyone, with humility in my heart, to heal with every beloved in all of humanity in the name of love, in the name of peace and joy and tranquility. Senor, 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 no master, madre. Senor, 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 mi corazón. Aquí a mi presento para cumplir mi misión. Aquí a mi presento de todo mi corazón. Oh my, oh my amado, guía esta misión. Cada paso que dé está llevo su mal. Oh Pai divino Pai, mostra-me sempre o caminho. Não me deixe cair, não me deixe sozinho. Aqui em vossos pés, me ajo com humildade. Aqui a vossos pés, eu peço e caridade. A todos eu curar, com humildade meu coração. A todo seu coração, em nome da salvação. With humility in my heart, I say yes to healing. I say yes to divine transformation. I say yes to the way of love. Kneeling at the feet of love, I affirm my yes. I affirm that what I truly want is to remember the truth of oneness, to hold every beloved as the truth of all oneness. I say yes. Yes, Lord, my heart, here I present myself to remember and to come home to love. Yes, I say yes. In every moment, guide me, guide me, guide me. Please show me the way. I say yes. So as our 
beloved Hafiz offers teachings of love with all beloved masters always present, always available, opening the heart. The root of the rose. In this cup I am drinking from, I can see the face behind every face. A well now, where creation has been drawn, I am. How can a jug being carried on the top of my head contain everything? A galaxy can appear in the reflection of a small, clear pool. Right where the moon may appear smiling at you from a body of still water, a fish may leap out and swallow that orb whole. And who is to say, maybe then lay it at your feet? Within an arm's reach is all I desire, so I am never in want. The root of the rose I have become from loving the way that I do. Mm. In this cup I am drinking from, I can see the face behind every face. When you drink from the cup of love, when you drink from the well of truth, Right now, right here, when you are drinking in the words of love, the words of the truth of love, in that power of that acceptance, you can see the true face of the Christ behind every face. This is the divine alchemy of love's healing. You do have to want to see the face behind every face. You have to want to see the holiness in every beloved and want to see nothing else. And when you look in the mirror, you want to see that beauty, that perfection of the face behind the face. To see your reflection in every beloved is to see the face behind the face. And where is this coming from? It is coming from drinking in the truth of love that is available in every sacred teaching and in every communion and every element of guidance. You are drinking from the cup of love. When you are willing to be guided when you are willing to ask, show me the way, show me the way, show me what's most helpful in every moment. Let me make no decisions on my own. Let me not use my mind to continue to believe in a separate world. But truly, I want to drink from this cup of love. I want to drink from the cup of truth. I don't want anything else. Mm. This is the heart's yearning. This is the heart's devotion. It's within you. Mm. Mm. But it needs to constantly be stirred. It needs to constantly be affirmed because the old identity of separation is the habit that acts like a rubber band that keeps going back to its old belief of limitation and separation. So it takes that yes of your heart to truly want to drink from the cup of truth and want nothing else. A well now where creation has been drawn, I am. Step into that well. Drink from the well of love. Drink deeply, constantly from the well of love. Want nothing else but to, to satiate your thirst for the divine. It's all available to you in every sacred teaching. It's available to you this moment. These divine words 
are the honey, are the harmony that is offering itself to you. Love is being offered to you. Love is offering itself through every word of love. And it's the yes to take it in, to receive. How can a jug being carried on the top of my head contain everything? The belief of separation would like to believe that it knows so much, that it can figure out that everything makes sense. And yet here is this beloved teaching, how can a jug being carried on the top of my head contain everything? It's to question everything in this world for making sense and recognize that in the divine alchemy of love's healing, everything is possible. Everything can be so taken upside down and inside out from what you think you know that a jug on top of your head contain, can contain the entire universe. <laughs> It's to allow yourself to enter <coughs> so deeply into love that you can't even imagine the universe of love, and yet you keep saying yes to it. Allowing the, the smallness of your mind to be expanded into the not knowing and accept all the mysteries and the beauty and the perfection within the universe as possible and as true, mm -hmm. that everything can be transformed, everything. A galaxy can appear in the reflection of a small, clear pool. The galaxies can appear in the reflection of a small, clear pool. Nothing is beyond the mysteries and the perfection and the beauty of creation and its movement. It's to expand everything that you thought you knew and let it all go and open to the mysteries of beauty and perfection. How can this be? Well, it can't be if you hold within your mind that you know how the world works. Mm -hmm. It's to let go of all of what you think you know about the world of levels and degrees and perceptions of smallness <clears throat> and bigness and, and right and wrong and let it all go. Surrender it all into the hands of God for transformation so that you can see the beauty and the perfection of creation in all of its exquisiteness, to see the face beyond the face, mm -hmm. to see the love beyond the form of all things, to see the permanence of creation everywhere instead of seeing temporariness and separation, to let go of what you believe the meaning is of everything and open to the divine love that is waiting to be in Right where the moon may appear smiling at you from a body of still water, a fish may leap out and swallow the moon completely. And who is to say, maybe then lay it at your feet. Expand, expand your heart. Expand everything into the acceptance of a divine world of wonder and beauty and tranquility and heart shape changing all the time and yet always only love accepting that the mind of separation cannot in any way fathom the beauty of creation of true creation and the eternalness of all life awaken 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 Within an arm's reach is all that I desire, so I am never in want. How could it possibly be that everything that you could possibly 
ever need is always right here, right now. Everything is perfect. Everything is whole. Everything is available with the yes to open the heart and surrender everything into the hands of God, holding nothing back. The root of the rose I have become from loving the way that I do. The more that you love, the more that you truly love without conditions and accept that loving truth within yourself, the more that you begin to recognize the root of the rose that you are. The root of the rose that has its permanence all the way through the earth, all the way through all of creation, <coughs> nothing missing, nothing wanting. Is it possible to accept a world that is beyond knowing and yet you can open to it and become aware of it just with your yes, with your letting go of what you know? There's a divine prayer. Can you affirm in your heart that you will not fear to look within today? That you will not fear to meet the friend that lives within? The truth of your beloved divine self you have a fear of. And you keep affirming and identifying with an outside form. Every time you look in the mirror and you stop and you say, yes, that's me. I know that face. I know that age. I know that structure. That's the moment of questioning. Really? Who is this beloved? I will not fear to look within today. I will not fear to find the truth of holiness within today. Within me is eternal innocence because it is God's will that it be there forever and forever. That is all that exists. I am the child of God whose will is limitless as God's is and can no longer accept any any other identity but the wholeness of truth and love. If I deny the truth of God, it is to deny my own truth. If I choose to see something else, I am choosing to see something I've made up in separation. To look within is but to find the divine heart that God created. Look within and find the innocent heart within. Look within, find the heart within. I fear to look within because I think I made another will, another identity that is not true, and I am and in that belief, I made it real for me. I made a separate identity. And now I'm ready to let it go. And yet, it has no effects. Within me is the holiness of God. Within me is the complete remembering of love. Within. Don't be afraid to go within. The reason that everybody stays so busy doing and being the doer is the fear of going within. And yet every beloved eventually has to come within and find the divine. It's waiting. And the way home, the way to find the truth of love within is to really question during the day during time, what am I focusing on? 
Am I identifying as the doer right now and filling the time with worry and concern and proving and fixing and figuring out this world all the time? All of that is the, is the distraction because you're so afraid of coming inside and finding and meeting the friend within. To meet the friend within, to see the face behind the face, mm. is the way home. Mm. And it is the, your holy purpose of being here on this earth plane. You came into the belief of incarnation, into the identity as a body, because you believed you were separate. And now it's time to return to the truth which is all what the journey has been for. It's truly a journey without distance to a place you never left. You haven't left the, the truth of oneness, but you made a world that says, yes, I did. But it isn't true. To no longer fill your life with busyness, with distractions of all kinds, problems of all kinds, so that you can stay away from meeting within and coming within in the stillness of love and hearing the voice of love and recognizing and seeing the truth of who you are. There's a beautiful teaching that says, I do not know who I am. I do not know what anything is for. I do not know what to make of anything. And in this quiet place of not knowing, your true self can tell you of itself. You can meet the friend. You can meet the friend that is waiting inside that is God. You can meet that friend, but you can't meet the friend and be busy and distracted by the world and focus your attention on seeming problems that are absolutely made by the mind that's afraid of the world to begin with. Fear just continues on and on and on in the belief that there is some danger, some danger in the world. Mm. But what is the root of all of this seeming danger? The belief that you are a body and that you are separate and that you will die. And everyone is afraid of dying. And yet, the promise is, the promise from the cup that you're drinking from is that there is no death. But can you accept this truth without proof? Can you accept this truth and truly bring it into your heart? That's the key. The key of faith, the key of trust, is to accept the divine truth of love without knowing it, without evidence that supports it. You have no evidence in this world that supports that life is eternal, except when you come in contact with divine beings. And you have that in your contact. So the beloved who came as Jesus that lived in a body over 2,000 years ago, is that beloved still serving humanity's remembering now? Yes, absolutely. When you, when you accept the truth of the divine teachings of Jesus and when you enter into that vibration of his beautiful perfection. You're with him. You are mm -hmm. recognizing mm -hmm. the truth of this divine being. When you come and you speak with me and you allow yourself to be blessed, you are with the eternal. You are with the divine that has lost all fear and has recognized eternal life. Every beloved being is offering you the same, same offerings. When Hephaestus' words are coming into your heart and resonating and stirring 
this beloved who was walking the earth in the 1300s is alive. Go beyond what you know because you identify with the body. A well now where creation has been drawn, I am. I am. A, a galaxy can appear in the reflection of a small clear pool. The root of the rose I have become from loving the way that I do. All of this is the divine manifestation of God. Mm -hmm. Can you expand mm -hmm. and accept that there is another world beyond the world of the mind that you made up? You have agreements in this world that say, yes, we are limited, we are in pain, we are in suffering, we are in fear, we are in the, the belief that we need to be protected, we are in the <coughs> belief that life is hard and difficult and others are a danger to us. And yet the divine, through all masters through all divine teachers <coughs> is offering always the same teaching you are whole and complete and the root of the rose and you will discover that root of the rose when you have learned to love and be loved and offer love in every moment accepting nothing else nothing else This instant is the only, only time that there is. You who believe in time, believe in death and birth. Everyone who believes in time believes in birth and death. And it's, it's a call to surrender time into the hands of God to let it be used for healing and remembering only. It's the only use of time that has any true purpose, is to use it for healing and remembering. There is no time except this instant. Mm -hmm. And if you can embrace love completely in this instant, and you can, then there is no more wanting or needing of anything because you recognize the fulfillment of all that there is. Everything is here right now. There's nothing missing except you believe there can be something missing because your mind is wandering all over the place. Your mind is telling you, no, this is going on and that's going on but all of that mind identity is never here present it's never in the stillness of this moment can you come and be released into love right here in this moment yes you can you can and every instant offers you that same thing the only belief of pain and suffering is coming from a time that is not here. Mm. When you believe in pain and suffering, which includes concern, worry, disturbance of any kind, it is because you are leaping from the past to the future. Pain is always, suffering is always, remembered and anticipated, which is past and future. It's never right here. Never here. Here is peace and harmony. So you can bring yourself out of the belief of pain and suffering by being here, by wanting to be here in this moment. But where is the mind right now? Is the mind wandering? Bring it back. Focus on this moment. Be here in your heart in this moment. 
in the resting place of love. Nothing else is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am willing to rest in God right now, right here. Mm -hmm. Can you bring that to your willingness? I'm willing to rest in God. <sighs> That's what the breathing is all about. I'm resting here in God. That means the mind is resting because there's nothing to think about, because there's nothing to focus on other than resting in God right here, right now. This is the only instant moment that there is. Everything else in time does not exist. I have conceived of time in such a way that I defeat my purpose. If I elect to reach past time to timelessness, I can change my perceptions of what time is for. Time's purpose cannot be to keep the past and future alive. The only interval in which I can be saved from time is now. For in this instant has forgiveness come to set me free. Forgiveness from the past, forgiveness from the future, fantasies of what you think time is for and what you think has to be accomplished. How can it be possible to have a focus on the future when love is here, when there is nothing to accomplish? If you can accept that there is nothing to accomplish, <coughs> you can rest here. But if you believe that you as a doer have, makes you important and makes you have purpose, it's all upside down and inside out. The only purpose is to remember love right here, right now. Right here, right now. Now the ego screams, oh no, that's not how, that's not how life works, sorry. <laughs> that is not how life works. Life works by being diligent to the doer. Diligent to figuring out how things should be in the rules of the world. What may not have been connected yet is that all of that diligence to the future is all based on the past. You cannot be diligent of the future except through what you have believed is the truth of who you are in the past. It's not possible. That's all that you have to draw from. You have no place else to glean anything from except your identity of separation which is your whole past that you made. So if you want the future, the unknown, to unfold in harmony and peace, you'll let go of the future by letting go of the past and being present. Present right now. All of love is right here. Mm. Everything is right here. The birth of the Christ is now, without a past or future. And you are the Christ. Allow yourself to come into awareness of your true being. That is the birth of the Christ. Remembering. Awareness. And the future and the past disappear. This is a gratitude for this instant. The deep gratitude for the instant. It is now, in this moment, that I can remember. Release is now. Here's the funniest thing. When you focus on the past and the future, and you have to recognize that you are actually focusing on the past and the future, because if you know anything, 
here in the past because that's all you have to glean from is the past. So if you're gleaning from the past and you're thinking about what's going to happen a minute from now and trying to figure it out, you're not available to wake up. Waking up happens in the present because it's all being in the present. That's all that waking, waking up is, is the awareness of what is. Waking up out of a dream state that always encompasses the past and the future. Every worry, every concern, every attention to what may happen and how it should happen and what it should look like and figuring things out is all pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. But you have to connect the dots to that to really see that that's where the pain and the suffering is, is actually getting made. And the ego would say, I, I can't live a life without worry. Mm -hmm. Hello, that is just complete fallacy. That's not, that's not even smart. Why would I want to live without worry when it gives me so much? And when I'm so identified with it? Who am I if I'm not a worry? <coughs> what would I do without worry? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've said a, a few times, the reason that beloveds hold on to worry so much is because they truly believe that the power of God is not so powerful as to take care of your life. You actually believe that the power of creation, the power of love, the power of God, the power of the universe cannot handle your life can't run your life as if your life is so complicated and so special that it needs your attention because you believe you made your life. You believe that you have a separate life, separate from creation. And you're so used to running it that the idea of letting it go, the possibility of letting it go seems like death because your identity of being the doer would disintegrate. You wouldn't have your identity of the doer anymore. And there is this, there is this <coughs> pleasure-seeking missile that keeps wanting to say, no, this is really, I do a really important job. I protect myself from the outside world. I protect myself from the problems of the world. But here's the funny part. All the world that you see is what you made up. <laughs> Everything that you see in the world is what you've made up and now you're trying to protect yourself from what you've made up. That is that's the insanity. I can see the face behind the face. I can see the face behind the face with my heart open, undefended. I can see a new universe, a true universe, the universe of love, of all of creation, of harmony and balance and, and ease and perfection. I can see it through the heart if I let go of the world that I made up in the name of fear, in the name of difficulty, in the name of death, I can, I can open and see through my heart, see this new world. Am I willing? Am I willing? That is the key. Trust will settle every problem now. Now. Again, we're here in this holy instant moment, present right now. Trust. Trust will settle every 
seeming problem now. If you put your trust in the truth of God, in the creation of oneness, in the flow of love, everything falls away that seemed like a problem. <clears throat> because every single problem that you can think of with your mind that makes up all problems are all coming from the one problem the problem is, is that you believe that you're separate from God. Mm -hmm. You believe you're on your own and needing to defend something, needing to protect something. <coughs> and all the while, love is calling you to come back, come back, come back to the truth, come back to love, come back to wholeness, come back to peace. Every problem, every seeming problem can be solved with trusting that there is no problem except that you believe that you're separate. But this is a trust because this is not something that you know. You don't know that all problems are one problem. The problem is, is that you believe you're separate. And since you're not separate, there is no problem. Could you actually bring this truth to every seeming problem? This would be your trust. I am believing that I'm separate, and that's the only problem that I made up. All problems are the one, come from the one belief that you are separate from God, and you are not separate from God. It's mm -hmm. not possible to mm -hmm. be separate from God. Now the ego again would say, well, I don't have proof of that, and I will believe it when I see it. But it doesn't work that way. You will see it when you believe it. You have to put your faith, your trust in the divine teachings and really give yourself to them, which is with as much willingness as you can in every moment. The yes to love, the yes, I will accept that I am whole and complete. I will not accept anymore that I am in danger. I refuse to accept that I am in any danger. No matter what the emotional body says, no matter what the physical body says, I refuse to accept that I am not the truth of God, that I am not can you accept that truth, that trust? Everything that you demonstrate to others, you are learning in the moment. If you offer pain and suffering in your beliefs of who you are, that's what you are teaching to others. If you teach only love, and learn that love is yours and that you are love, that is what you teach. Teach only love. You are teaching all the time. Every contact that you have with every beloved and including every thought that you have that you keep in your own head, you are either offering love to yourself or you're offering pain and suffering. What are you teaching with every word that you offer to every other beloved? And when you look at other beloveds and you just have judgment or opinions about them or think you know who they are or what it's all about, then you're teaching that to them through the energy bodies, through the energy fields. You are never not offering something you're either offering fear or you're offering love. But it takes great intention to want to offer only love and not to want to speak any words that are not loving and of love itself and that will not help that beloved remember the truth of oneness. When you say to a beloved, 
the world is a hard place, or this is a hard day, or this is, this is um, a difficulty, or anything else. You are offering pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. You are offering pain and suffering. When you are talking about what your ownership of your life is about, when you are talking about, oh, I got this new, this new item and it's so great and I'm so excited about having it, you are not offering love. You are offering fear. You are offering pain to another beloved by affirming that ownership of items is what the world is all about. Rather than the truth of God is everything. I want to offer only love. Am I offering peace and joy? Am I asking to be guided in every moment? Am I opening to show me the way? I don't know the way, but I'm willing to be led and I'm willing to speak and be the instrument of God's words, not my own. I'm willing to never speak again unless I'm speaking the words of God. Not coming from my mind, but coming from the heart of guidance. Speak. Let the words of love be spoken. Let me be the instrument of those words. Let me be completely devoted and dedicated to being the instrument of love. Is this possible? Absolutely. Is this the way? Absolutely. I would rather never speak again than to offer words that are not of love and wholeness. I would rather not make comparisons with someone and for someone. I don't want to offer that anymore. I don't want to tell someone else how much I like this and how much I don't like this and how good this is and how bad this is and I I figured this out and I know and this means this and this means that. I don't want to speak of that. I want to speak the words of love and offer wholeness and divine healing to ever beloved. I want to offer humility to ever beloved the humbleness of the words of God spoken through me rather than my mind speaking of what I know from the past. That's the choice. And it is a blessed, blessed choice because every time you allow the guidance of love to speak through you, your own heart is healed. Every time you allow the words of love to speak through you, and you recognize those are the words of love that you truly are. And you come closer and closer to remembering the truth of oneness. This is the way home. The willingness to be guided. The willingness to be the instrument of love that only speaks of love. That only speaks of tenderness and compassion and ease and harmony and truth of love in every word. The root of the rose I have become from loving the way that I do. To become the root of the rose is to become what you've always been. But when you speak of dangers and likes and dislikes and levels and degrees and and accomplishments and and getting and and difficulties you are not loving and it's to recognize that that isn't love and to really want to make that choice really want to offer only love because every time you offer love your own heart blooms with the rose Every time you offer love, your heart expands and you recognize more deeply the truth of oneness. Every time you offer love, you come 
closer and closer and closer to oneness and divine union with every beloved. When you're offering love, you're extending the truth of oneness and the the belief of division, the belief of separateness melts away a little bit every time because you no longer want to offer anything else but love. You just don't want to. Now how can you heal if you're in a place of fear? Can, how can you communicate and and embrace another beloved when you're living in fear. It's by being truthful. I am trapped in the belief of fear right now. I'm upside down and I can't remember the truth of love. And I'm needing help. This is the truthfulness, the honesty of offering to another beloved the way of healing. The willingness to say the truth that in this moment I have forgotten how to love, but I'm willing to remember. I'm caught in some identity that I've forgotten the truth of who I am, but I'm, I'm saying yes to love and I'm saying yes to healing. And I want to bring only love to everyone. This is the truthfulness. This is the willingness to see the face behind the face. This is the willingness to step past the defenses of being nice social commentary rather than I've forgotten who I am right now that I'm, I'm holding in the truth of God and I'm willing to accept that I've made a mistake in identity. And I'm willing to accept the wholeness of God once again. I say yes to healing. I say yes to transformation. I'm willing to be that honest with every beloved. I'm willing to expose myself in deep humility and express that I've forgotten, but that I'm asking for help to remember and that I'm praying for help to remember, rather than, hi, how are you, how's your day, what's, what's new, and filling space with a defense system. But really, how are you, my darling? How are you? Mm -hmm. Let us connect in the heart and be in this oneness, breathing together. Let us affirm the truth of love and affirm our intention to love every day in every way. In truth and in trust, every seeming problem will be settled now. If we bring it to love in the moment, Oh, my Father, give me strength, give me courage on this road. When a beloved asks you, how are you? And you say, fine. Are you? Are you filled with the spirit of love? And the yes to remembering? Is that what you're expressing? Or are you wanting to give them a false image so that you stay in agreement of being defended. It's a big leap of faith, but in trust, every seeming problem can be solved right now. In every way. In every way. Within an arm's reach is all that I, that I yearn for. So I am never in want because everything is right here waiting for me to just say yes to this moment, to being present in this moment. Several times in these last few days,
the same beloveds have have all gathered in the same in the same calling that every beloved holds the doubt that everything can be healed that you can wake up that you can wake up and remember in this lifetime which is all of healing that when you look at your life and you believe it is so complicated and so difficult and so enmeshed in so much that you can't imagine that everything could be healed and yet the promise the trust of God is to recognize that it has been promised that in this world everything can be healed this was one of the first teachings that was offered to me this was one of the first truths that was offered to me in the journey of remembering when I held the belief so tightly so fully that I was beyond the possibility of being healed that I was beyond that I was so damaged that I was so so insane that it was not possible to heal and yet this master came and said the stars promised mm -hmm. and told him that everything in this world could be healed and the acceptance of that truth the acceptance of that nourishment opened all the doors to accept in blind faith <coughs> that this master was offering the way home to break through the the resistance through the belief system that said no not this life this life is too damaged no not this not this lifetime this is too complicated no this is too painful there is too much pain here that could ever be healed and yet here was this master promising that the stars told him that everything could be healed and I accepted it I accepted it and I anchored myself in this promise and I said yes again and again and again and I would keep saying yes it didn't matter how many lifetimes it would take I was saying yes and I devoted every moment to that yes not because I was good at it but because I truly wanted to remember the truth of life and to be free and to come home to God come home to oneness not knowing what that meant not knowing what that would look like not knowing anything but just the yes the promise was everything could be healed with the yes to love and the accepting mm -hmm. of divine alchemy in every moment the willingness to step into and say yes to the miracles of love and to commune in revelation with the truth of God and to not accept anything else but to meet the friend within to let go of the self-hatred the self-punishment the self-abuse the self-loathing and accept the truth of God the promise of God that this was only truly the innocence of God and nothing else to accept innocence to accept wholeness, to accept holiness right here, right now, in this instant, in this moment, that everything could be healed. Everything that was made up because none of it was true. None of the belief of pain and suffering was true. Could it be healed? Absolutely. Was it healed? Absolutely. Absolutely. But it was just the acceptance of that truth. To accept it as true. And to refuse anymore to accept the belief of separation and limitation. To accept anymore the past as the evidence of damage. To no longer accept Time was 
true and that there was limitation to accept timelessness, to accept wholeness, to accept perfection, to accept holiness itself. This was the way of love, the yes, the will not deny the offering of love. I will not say I know the truth when all I know is a lie. I will accept that I was mistaken about what I thought I knew about life and the world. I will accept a new way. I will accept the promise of truth, mm -hmm. the yes of every divine teaching. I will accept it. I will drink it. I will wear it. I will live it. I will breathe it. I will melt into it. And everything else will disappear because only love is true. Only God lives. And that true life is eternal. And I say, That's your heart. That is your heart stirring. Mm -hmm. But only you can bring that willingness to accept that and to accept the truth of love. Only your willingness can say, I refuse to accept my identity as I've known it. I refuse to accept my mind's shenanigans. I refuse to accept the game that the mind plays over and over again of knowing. I refuse to accept the lies of limitation. I refuse to accept the belief that I know what life means. I refuse to accept the past as true. I refuse to accept that there is a legitimacy to fear. I can see peace instead of what I'm believing in right now if I choose to accept peace. I have given everything that I know all the meaning that it has I have given the world all the meaning that it has, and now I am willing to surrender the meaning that I have given to everything and accept the divine alchemy of feeling and remembering. Everything can be healed. It is not possible that the power of God has any limits. It is not possible that you know something that is different and separate from God. It is not possible that you know of pain and suffering when there is no pain and suffering in God, in love. The, the right use of denial is the call to love the call to harmony, the call to peace, the call to oneness, the willingness to no longer put your faith in fear and to recognize that fear can't be healed because fear is a byproduct of the belief of separation. But the belief of separation can be surrendered and all fear will disappear. When I first became aware through the same master that fear was the great rebellion, that I was rebelling against God whenever I danced with fear, I had to start choosing fear and to start choosing peace, to start choosing trust, and to start putting my life into the hands of God, giving my life over. Take this life. Take this life and turn it into love.
Mm. Where, where I have made something separate, I release it into the hands of love right now. I don't even know what that would look like, but I'm surrendering into the holy wisdom of all love. I don't want to keep anything separate. I don't want to keep anything as a separate identity. I say yes to love. I say yes to wholeness. I say yes to all of creation. I say yes. One. One love. One heart. One truth. Nothing else. I surrender the identity of being a body. Surrender the identity of being temporary. I surrender the identity of being lost. I surrender the identity of being damaged. I surrender the identity of being without. I surrender the identity of scarcity. I refuse to live a false identity. And I forgive, I forgive, I forgive every thought that was mistaken in the belief of separation. I forgive the world that I made of pain and suffering. I say yes to forgiveness. I forgive every beloved that I ever gave a false identity to. I forgive every identity that I said was separate from me. In coming back to the wholeness of one, the one I am. One, one whole and creation, holy and holy. Now is the time, now is the moment for love. You've walked, you've walked in this journey for maybe a thousand lifetimes. But this is the moment of yes and this is the moment of transformation. This is the moment. Every moment is new and available and filled with the promise of yes. If you choose to accept that you cannot be anything else but the divine. And the questioning, who am I, what am I if I'm not this, what I think I am? And the willingness to let the spirit of love reveal to you the truth of your exquisite, magnificent wholeness. Mm. Questioning during the day. What is this for? What is, what's my intention in this moment? What am I thinking about right now? Uh, is it for love? Is it to help? Is it peaceful? Is it truly of love? Am I available for love? Or is my mind running its own storyline? I have choice. I have the choice to love or I have the choice to fear, which is hate. Mm. I have the choice to believe in enemies. I have the choice to believe in beloveds. I have the choice constantly. What do I believe my judgments give me? What do I believe that I'm getting from having opinions and making up strange identities with everything. I can come back to love. God is always waiting. Mm -hmm. Love is always waiting. The spirit of love is always waiting. In the, in the prayer, the garden of love, the garden of love is waiting for me. I open up my heart to find love waiting patiently, always waiting for your yes. Please help me find my way to the Garden of Love. Help me in this belief of a struggle, 
as I try to find my way. Hold my hand as I walk in this seeming journey. And let me recognize that God's will, even in the journey, is that I walk in flower petals. And that it is not God's will for me to suffer, even while I am remembering. The happy dream I will accept until I awaken out of the dream into love itself. I accept that there is no punishment in God. There is no judgment in God. There is no deserving of any punishment in God. There are no opinions in God. And then God sees none of the difficulties and the anger and the pain and the suffering because love only can recognize love. And this in and of itself is the recognition that it's all made up. This can't be understood, mm -hmm. but this can be accepted. Releasing the belief of separation. It's a belief. That's all. That's all. Even though everything in the world says, oh, but there's so much evidence. And I want to believe the evidence. Well, that's the choice. Believing the evidence or believing and trusting in the Word of God. The holy teachings of love. That is the choice. Choosing to trust in the divine teachings of love or choosing the old familiar, the habits of pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this world, everything can be healed. This is the promise. And this is right now. With your yes, with your devotion, to refuse to believe anymore in your mind's wanderings of pain and suffering. Surrendering the mind into the hands of God. Surrendering the heart into the hands of God. Take it all and use it for love. So in this moment, if there are any questions, allow your heart to speak. So take, take the moment and ask yourself the question, what do I truly want? And affirm for yourself that what you truly want is peace and joy and harmony. And that you are devoting your life to that, what you truly want, peace and joy and harmony. And that when you choose peace and joy and harmony, that in and of itself is self-love. To no longer choose difficulty. To no longer choose suspicions. To no longer choose temporariness. To no longer choose self-affliction, peace and joy and harmony are your birthright. It's who you are. Mm -hmm. So as we close,
finding the willingness in this moment to extend love to every beloved in this moment in this moment the willingness to open the heart and refuse to be distracted in any way but to be truly present in this moment and to drink from the well of divine nourishment and to continue to drink from that well. The yes, the well is always here. The yes. Mm -hmm. In this moment we gratefully accept the truth of the abundance of love. And this abundance that presents itself and that the reflects itself and manifests itself in all forms, we gratefully accept that abundance, the flow of love. We say yes to all offerings of love, of abundance. We say yes to all donations that come 